Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, you may also call me Lo, and today I'm doing a pretty big book haul. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well and let's get on into it. So I think there are, I didn't count them before starting to film, there are 31 books here, if I counted correctly. And yeah, I'm really excited about all of them. I think I'm going to start with the ones that I got for book clubs, and then I'll go into my book of the month books, because I have my March and April books to show you, and then I'll go through the rest of them. All right, so starting with the books I got for various book clubs. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is the May pick for Noelle's Hot Girl Book Club. Um, I've never participated in Noelle's book club before, but all the books seemed really interesting, so I picked them all up. Um, there's one that I had to pre-order that's not here yet. But this is a historical fiction book. Chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing as an average woman. But it's the early 1960s, and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality. Except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize-nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind. True chemistry results. Like science, though, life is unpredictable. Which is why a few years later, Elizabeth Zott finds herself not only a single mother, but also the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking, combine one teaspoon acetic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary. But as her following grows, not everyone is happy. Because, as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook. She's daring them to change the status quo. I feel like I haven't been reading a lot of historical fiction, so I'm really excited about this one. Hopefully I get to it in May for the book club. I did this in a really weird order, but this is the hot girl book club pick for April. This one I hope to actually read in April, which means I'll have read it before this video goes up. Um, but as of right now, I have not read it. And this is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malors. 24-year-old British painter Cleo has escaped from England to New York and is finding her place in a sleepless city when a few months before her student visa ends, she meets Frank. 20 years older and a self-made success, Frank's life is full of all the excesses Cleo's lacks. He offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. But their impulsive marriage irreversibly changes both of their lives and the lives of those close to them in ways they never could have predicted. Each compulsively readable chapter explores the lives of Cleo, Frank, and an unforgettable cast of their closest friends and family as they grow up and grow older. Whether it's Cleo's best friend struggling to embrace his gender queerness in the wake of Cleo's marriage, or Frank's financially dependent sister arranging sugar daddy dates to support herself after being cut off, or Cleo and Frank themselves as they discover the trials of marriage and mental illness, each character is as absorbing and painfully relatable as the last. So yeah, this is the April pick and I'm very excited about it. I hope that I will actually get to it this month. We'll see. Next I have books for Sydney's Nightcrawler book club. Let's see if I can actually get these in the correct order this time. So first I have Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. This book I talked about a little bit in my Try a Chapter Challenge video that I posted in March. I still haven't read it, but this one follows 18-year-old Donis Fontaine, who has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation. She dreams of a fresh start at college, but when family tragedy strikes, Donis puts her future on hold to look after her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, the charming new recruit on her brother Levi's hockey team. Yet even as Donis falls for Jamie, she senses the dashing hockey star is hiding something. Everything comes to light when Donis witnesses a shocking murder, thrusting her into an FBI investigation of a lethal new drug. Reluctantly, Donis agrees to go undercover drawing on her knowledge of chemistry and Ojibwe traditional medicine to track down the source. But the search for truth is more complicated than Donis imagined, exposing secrets and old scars. 
At the same time, she grows concerned with an investigation that seems more focused on punishing the offenders than protecting the victims. I really thought this was a fantasy, and I found out recently that it was kind of like a mystery thriller type of book. Um, I don't know why this cover just really gives me like fantasy vibes, but I'm very excited to get to this one. Hopefully I'll get to it soon. This was a March pick for the book club and I didn't get to it. Um, so I hope to get to it soon. We'll see. <laughs> Next are the Nightcrawler book club April picks. There are three. The first one is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Popretto. I had a sister once. In a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of phoenix riders, legendary warriors who soared through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. I promised her the throne would not come between us. Sixteen years later, Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a phoenix rider like the heroes of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica strikes out alone to find the riders, even if that means disguising herself as a boy to join their ranks. But it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Just as Veronica finally feels like she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. And meanwhile, the new empire has learned of the writer's return and intends to destroy them once and for all. Sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. So obviously this is a fantasy book. I believe it's a YA fantasy book, but I am very excited about this one. Like Cleopatra and Frankenstein, this is a book I'm hoping to get to in April. So there's a chance that I'll have already read it by the time this video goes up. And if so, it will be in my April wrap up. Okay, next we have two additional books for the Nightcrawler book club. So I bought both of them. I was excited about all of them. What can I say? So first we have Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. This is a YA fantasy book as well. Everyone has a soul. Some are beautiful gardens, others are frightening dungeons. Soul walkers, like Kamai and her mother, can journey into other people's souls while they sleep. But no matter where Kamai visits, she sees the black door. It follows her into every soul, and her mother has told her to never, ever open it. When Kamai touches the door, it is warm and beating like it has a pulse. When she puts her ear to it, she hears her own name whispered from the other side. When tragedy strikes, Kamai does the unthinkable. She opens the door. I don't know. It sounds incredibly intriguing. I'm very excited about it. I know Darian from Darian Reads absolutely loves this. Um, so I'm very, very excited to give this one a shot. The last Nightcrawler book pick is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This one I had genuinely never heard of until the book club, but I'm excited to try it out. In a city covered in ice and ruin, a group of magicians face off in a daring game of magical feats to find the next headliner of the conquering circus. Fame and glory await the winner, but no contestant is safe when an unseen danger begins striking behind the scenes. Accidents, injuries, missing magicians, Though each act grows riskier, the show must go on, and the three entangled within the dark heart of it will do whatever it takes to keep their secrets from rising to the surface. The star, Kalia, a powerful showgirl, out to prove she's the best, no matter the cost. The master, Jack, the enigmatic keeper of the club, and more than one lie told. The magician, DeMarco, the brooding judge haunted by a past he can no longer hide. Little do they know, on a stage where love, lies, and illusion collide, nothing ever escapes the spotlight, especially in a game with no way out. This book honestly sounds like what I wanted the Night Circus to be. People are gonna like cancel me for hating on the Night Circus. I gave it three stars. I just thought it was like it like promised a battle between magicians and like never came through with that promise. So it like wasn't what I expected it to be. And this I feel like is going to be what I wanted. Next are my book of the month picks. So in March, my like book pick was the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I have not read The Sundown Motel. Is that what the book is called? The other one that this author wrote? that everyone loved. I have not read that one, uh, but this out of the books for March seemed the most interesting to me. In 1977, Clear Lake, Oregon was shaken by the Lady Killer murders. Two men, seemingly randomly, 
were murdered with the same gun, with strange notes left behind. Beth Greer was the perfect suspect, a rich, eccentric 23-year-old woman seen fleeing one of those crime scenes. But she was acquitted, and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. Oregon, 2017. Shay Collins is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, Beth says yes. They meet regularly at Beth's mansion, though Shay is never comfortable there. Items move when she's not looking, and she could swear she's seen a girl outside the window. The allure of learning the truth about the case from the smart, charming Beth is too much to resist. But even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with a manipulative murderer, or are there other dangers lurking in the darkness of the Greer house? I, as you probably know if you've watched my videos, used to live in Seattle, and my boyfriend grew up right outside of Seattle, and he always talks about how, like, all books and movies with, like, serial killers and, like, crime and, like, some, like, paranormal stuff all always take place in the Pacific Northwest because it's, like, rainy and gloomy there. And this is no exception, but I kind of love it as a person who just loves the Pacific Northwest and loves a, like, creepy, eerie, gloomy vibe. So I'm very excited about this book. I've heard that it has some, like, paranormal stuff going on, which I'm kind of excited about. I could use, like, a creepy eerie kind of like suspenseful kind of paranormal read in my collection so I'm very very excited to get to this one eventually it might be more of a like fall kind of read for me but we'll see all right next are my add-ons for March I ended up choosing No Exit by Taylor Adams I'm pretty far behind on this but the movie came out and I just really wanted to read the book I've heard mixed things about the movie um, and also about the book but I want to give it a shot and I was looking for some eerie, maybe like horror-ish books. I think this is considered a thriller, but anyway. On her way to Utah to see her dying mother, college student Darby Thorne gets caught in a fierce blizzard in the Colorado Rockies. With the roads impassable, she's forced to wait out a storm at a remote highway rest stop with no cell phone reception. Inside are some vending machines, a coffee maker, and four complete strangers. Desperate to find a signal to call home, the exhausted young art student goes back out into the storm and makes a horrifying discovery. In the back of the van parked next to her car is a little girl locked in an animal crate. Who is the child? Why has she been taken? And how can Darby save her? There is no way to call for help and no way out. One of her fellow travelers is a kidnapper, but which one? Trapped in an increasingly dangerous situation on the edge of civilization, with the child's life and her own on the line, Darby must find a way to break the girl out of the van and escape. But who can she trust? And my last add-on for March was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This book has been on my list of things to read for absolute ever. <laughs> I think I'm going to love this. If I were to do a five star predictions, I would definitely put this on it. After reading Black Cake, I'm really like seeking out some multi-generational stories and I think this will be right up my alley when I get to it. I also think the hardcover of this is like stunning, like stunning. So super excited. Profoundly moving and gracefully told, Pachinko follows one Korean family through the generations beginning in early 1900s Korea with Sunja, the prized daughter of a poor yet proud family whose unplanned pregnancy threatens to shame them. Betrayed by her wealthy lover, Sunja finds unexpected salvation when a young tubercular minister offers to marry her and bring her to Japan to start a new life. So begins a sweeping saga of exceptional people in exile from a homeland they never knew and caught in the indifferent arc of history. In Japan, Sunja's family members endure harsh discrimination, catastrophes, and poverty, yet they also encounter great joy as they pursue their passions and rise to meet the challenges this new home presents. Through desperate struggles and hard-won triumphs, they are bound together by deep roots as their family faces enduring questions of faith, family, and identity. On to April, book of the month. My choice for April was 
Kai Kei by Vishnavi Patel. This book, um, all I know about it is that it's a fantasy and I can't remember the summary, but I read it before I got this and it definitely seemed super interesting and it's had really good reviews, so I'm very excited about this one. So begins Kai Kei's story. The only daughter of the kingdom of Kakaya, she is raised on tales of the gods, how they churned the vast ocean to obtain the nectar of immortality, how they vanquish evil and ensure the land of Barat prospers, and how they offer powerful boons to the worthy. Yet she watches as her father unceremoniously banishes her mother, listens as her own worth is reduced to the marriage alliance she can secure. And when she calls upon the gods for help, they never seem to hear. Desperate for independence, she turns to the texts she once read with her mother and discovers a magic that is hers alone. With it, Kaikei transforms herself from an overlooked princess into a warrior, diplomat, and most favored queen. But as the evil from her childhood stories threatens the cosmic order, the path she has forged clashes with the destiny the gods have chosen for her family. And Kaikei must decide if resistance is worth the destruction it will wreak and what legacy she intends to leave behind. This one I have heard nothing but good things about. Everyone who reads it seems to love it. I hope I like it as much as everyone else does. I also got two add-ons in April. I like really need to slow down, but. I got The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwike Amezi. This one has been on my list of things to read forever. I read Pet in February and absolutely loved it. Um, I also have an arc for You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty, which is coming out in May, and I'm just so excited to read this. One afternoon in a town in southeastern Nigeria, a mother opens her front door to discover her son's body wrapped in colorful fabric at her feet. What follows is the tumultuous, heart-wrenching story of one family's struggle to understand a child whose spirit is both gentle and mysterious. Raised by a distant father and a compassionate but overprotective mother, Vivek Oji suffers disorienting blackouts, moments of disconnection between self and surroundings. As adolescence leads to adulthood, Vivek finds solace in friendships with the warm, boisterous daughters of the Niger wives, foreign-born women married to Nigerian men. But Vivek's closest bond is with Asita, the worldly, high-spirited cousin whose teasing confidence masks a guarded private life. As their relationship deepens and Asita struggles to understand Vivek's escalating crisis, the mystery gives way to a heart-stopping act of violence in a moment of exhilarating freedom. And last book of the month book was my second add-on, which is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. The year is 1926 and Shanghai hums to the tune of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the streets red, numbing the city to its chaos. At the heart of it all is 18-year-old Juliet Kai, a former flapper girl who has returned to begin her duties as the proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. And behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov, who was Juliet's first love until he betrayed her. But when gangsters on both sides start clawing their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion, a madness, of a monster in the shadows. As the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns aside and work together no matter their personal grudges. For if they cannot contain this mayhem, then there will be no city left for either to rule. I recently started following Chloe Gong on Twitter. I've never read any of her books, but she's super funny and like interesting. And I'm just kind of like obsessed with her. So I had to pick up her book. <laughs> um, I believe this is a series and I'm really excited to dive into it. Next we have the rest of the books. I'm going to start with The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina. I feel like I featured this in so many videos at this point. Um, and I definitely talked about it in my March wrap up and in my read books vlog where I just read books that were read to kind of like find a criteria to get things off of my physical TBR. Um, and that should be out by now. Hopefully it's out by now. This book follows the matriarch of the Montoya family, who is kind of this like witchy, mysterious, magical 
type of person. Um, and she has, I think, five husbands throughout her life, and she has lots of children and grandchildren. And we follow her as an old woman as she sends this letter off to all of her children and grandchildren, telling them that she's dying and that they have to come and collect their inheritance. But when they get to her house, she is turning into a tree, and she kind of bestows these mysterious gifts upon all of her children and grandchildren. And then seven years later, we follow several of the grandchildren as they start to be like stalked by this mysterious person from Orchidea's past and have to kind of delve into Orchidea's history in order to stop this mysterious person. This book was great. I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four stars. Next is The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. This book, everyone has read at this point. It's been all over booktube. I haven't read it yet. I heard that this book had been self-published and then was picked up by a publisher. And they actually added parts to this book that I guess are essential to read in order to read the next book, which hasn't come out yet. So I'm kind of happy that I stalled because I got the updated edition. Each decade, only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to earn a place in the Alexandrian society, the foremost secret society in the world. The chosen will secure a life of power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams, but at what cost? Each of the six newest recruits has their reasons for accepting the society's elusive invitation. Even if it means growing closer than they could have imagined to their most dangerous enemies, or risking unforgivable betrayal from their most trusted allies. They will fight tooth and nail for the right to join the ranks of the Alexandrians, even if it means that they won't all survive the year. I've heard great things about this and I can't wait to read it. I'm very, very, very excited about this one. Next is All's Well by Mona Awad. I read Bunny before I started book two and I did not like it. I think I gave it two stars. But I did listen to the audiobook and I've been told that the audiobook isn't good. So I've been thinking about possibly picking Bunny up again, although I really didn't like it. But I was interested in this one by Mona Awad. I can't say I have tremendously high hopes, but I do want to read this one. Miranda Fitch's life is a waking nightmare. The accident that ended her burgeoning acting career left her with excruciating chronic pain a failed marriage, and a deepening dependence on painkillers. And now she's on the verge of losing her job as a college theater director. Determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, the play that promised and cost her everything, she faces a mutinous cast hell-bent on staging Macbeth instead. Miranda sees her chance at redemption slip through her fingers. That's when she meets three strange benefactors who have an eerie knowledge of Miranda's past and a tantalizing promise for her future one where the show goes on, her rebellious students get what's coming to them, and the invisible, doubted pain that's kept her from the spotlight is made known. Next, I have In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. This book is a book that Noelle recently talked about, Noelle Seven Pages, and I have a friend, Heather, who wanted my copy of The Last True Poets of the Sea, which I read in March, and we did a little trade. So now I have this book. June is a brilliant but difficult girl with a gift for mechanical invention who leaves home to begin grueling astronaut training at the National Space Program. Younger by two years than her classmates at Peter Reed, the school on campus named for her uncle, she flourishes in her classes but struggles to make friends and find true intellectual peers. Six years later, she has gained a coveted post as an engineer on a space station and a hard-won sense of belonging but is haunted by the mystery of Inquiry, a revolutionary spacecraft powered by her beloved late uncle's fuel cells. The spacecraft went missing when June was 12 years old, and while the rest of the world seems to have forgotten the crew, June alone has evidence that makes her believe that they are still alive. She seeks out James, her uncle's former protege, also brilliant, also difficult, who has been trying to discover why Inquiry's fuel cells failed. James and June forge an intense intellectual bond that becomes an electric attraction. But the love that develops between them as they work to solve the fuel cell's fatal flaw threatens to destroy everything they've worked so hard to create. 
and any chance of bringing the Inquiry crew home alive. Next is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. You probably know by now that I read this in March. I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. It was what inspired me to get Pachinko from Book of the Month. Um, and I read this as an arc and ended up purchasing the hardcover because I loved it. This book is a multi-generational story that follows primarily two siblings, Benny and Byron, who are estranged but reunite when their mother unfortunately passes away. And when they get there and sit down with their mother's lawyer, he tells them that she's left them this kind of extensive audio recording that they have to listen to before they can kind of discuss matters of her estate and their inheritances and all that kind of thing. So they discover through this recording that their mother's life was kind of unknown to them and her past was unknown to them and there are a lot of kind of secrets within their family and kind of through the recording Benny and Byron kind of get to know their family and their family's past but also kind of get to know each other and understand each other more. It was beautiful. Highly recommend. Five stars. Next I have To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers is an author I've been meaning to get to forever. This one's just a short little novella, but I've heard really good things about it. At the turn of the 22nd century, scientists make a breakthrough in human spaceflight. Through a revolutionary method known as soma forming, astronauts can survive in hostile environments off Earth using synthetic biological supplementations. They can produce antifreeze in sub-zero temperatures, absorb radiation and convert it for food, and conveniently adjust to the pull of different gravitational forces. With the fragility of the body no longer a limiting factor, human beings are at last able to journey to neighboring exoplanets long known to harbor life. Ariadne O'Neill and her three crewmates are hard at work in a planetary system 15 light years from Sol on a mission to ecologically survey four habitable worlds. But as Ariadne shifts through both form and time, the culture back on Earth has also been transformed. Faced with the possibility of returning to a planet that has forgotten those who have left, Ariadne begins to chronicle the story of the wonders and dangers of her mission in the hope that someone back home might still be listening. Next is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. Again, I feel like this has been all over booktube. Sydney from Sid Bookworm really liked this, and I feel like people have been reading this a lot lately. Um, it's also a book that's been on my list forever and I'm glad to finally own it. A girl named Rose is riding her new bike near her home in Deadwood, South Dakota when she falls through the earth <laughs> and into the palm of a giant metal hand. 17 years later, the mystery of the bizarre artifact remains unsolved. Its origins, architects, and purpose unknown. Rose Franklin, now a highly trained physicist, leads a top secret team determined to crack the hand's code. While powerful forces with uncertain motives close in, demanding answers about the relic and what it portends for humanity. But once the pieces of the puzzle are in place, will the result prove to be an instrument of lasting peace or a weapon of mass destruction? Next is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. The only booktuber I've heard talk about this is Cass. I will link her channel down below. But I heard about this originally from my good friend in real life who uh, recommended this book to me and loved this book and also really loved the Akatar series and she was the reason I read that. So I trust her wholeheartedly. I'm very excited about this one. This is a fantasy romance. Lara has only one thought for her husband on their wedding day. I will bring your kingdom to its knees. A princess trained from childhood to be a lethal spy, Lara knows that the bridge kingdom represents both legendary evil and legendary promise. The only route through a storm-ravaged world, the Bridge Kingdom controls all trade and travel between lands, allowing its ruler to enrich himself and deprive his enemies, including Lara's homeland. So when she is sent as a bride under the guise of fulfilling a treaty of peace, Lara is prepared to do whatever it takes to fracture the defenses of the impenetrable Bridge Kingdom. As she infiltrates her new home, a lush paradise surrounded by tempest seas, and comes to know her new husband, Aaron, Lara begins to question where the true evil resides. Around her, she sees a kingdom fighting for survival, and in Aaron, a man fiercely protective of his people. As her mission drives her to deeper understanding of the fight to possess the bridge, 
Lara finds the simmering attraction between her and Arin impossible to ignore. Her goal nearly within reach, Lara will have to decide her own fate. Will she be the destroyer of a king or the savior of her people? Next we have Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. This book I've heard of from multiple people on booktube. It's gotten kind of mixed reviews, but the synopsis sounds really interesting to me. It actually sounds quite similar to The Bridge Kingdom, but well, you'll see. Empress Margarot has had plans for her daughters since the day they were born. Princesses Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice will be queens. And now, age 16, they must leave their homeland and marry their princess. Beautiful, smart, and demure, the triplets appear to be the perfect brides because Margaro knows there is only one common truth. Everyone underestimates a girl, which is a grave mistake. Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice are no innocents. They have been trained since birth in the arts of deception, seduction, and violence with a singular goal, to bring down monarchies. And their marriages are merely the first stage in their mother's grand vision, to one day reign over the entire continent of Vesteria. The princesses have spent their lives preparing, and now they are ready, each with their own secret skill, and each with a single wish pulled from the stars. Only, the stars have their own plans, and their mother hasn't told them all of hers. Next is a classic, <laughs> The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I heard about this on Rachel from, well, I've heard about it for a long, long time, but Rachel from Raven Haired Reader really, like, hyped me up for this book from a vlog that she did, so I ended up buying it. It was a book I wasn't sure I was gonna read or not, but now I definitely am. Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of fairy. 10 years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there, but many of the fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest son of the high king. To win a place at court, Jude must defy him and face the consequences. Next is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This is a book that I feel like is very beloved in the fantasy community. Um, it's definitely a book that I've had on my radar for a really long time, and I had a friend recommend this to me recently, so I decided to pick it up. Logan Ninefingers, infamous barbarian, has finally run out of luck. Caught in one feud too many, he's on the verge of becoming a dead barbarian, leaving nothing behind him but bad songs, dead friends, and a lot of happy enemies. Nobleman, dashing officer, and paragon of selfishness, Captain Jazal Dan Luther has nothing more dangerous in mind than fleecing his friends at cards and dreaming of glory in the fencing circle. But war is brewing, and on the battlefields of the frozen north, they fight by altogether bloodier rules. Inquisitor Glockta, cripple turned torturer, would like nothing better than to see Jazal come home in a box. But then, Glockta hates everyone. Cutting treason out of the Union, one confession at a time, leaves little room for friendship. His latest trail of corpses may lead him right to the rotten heart of government, if he can stay alive long enough to follow it. Enter the Wizard, Bayaz. A bald old man with a terrible temper and a pathetic assistant, he could be the first of the Magi, he could be a spectacular fraud, but whoever he is, he's about to make the lives of Logan, Jazal, and Glockta a whole lot more difficult. Murderous conspiracies rise to the surface, old scores are ready to be settled, and the line between hero and villain is sharp enough to draw blood. Next is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Ten years after graduation, Jessica Miller has planned her triumphant return to Southern Elite Duquette University, down to the envious whispers that are sure to follow in her wake. Everyone is going to see the girl she wants them to see. Confident, beautiful, indifferent. Not the girl she was when she left campus. Back when Heather Shelby's murder fractured everything, including the tight bond linking the six friends she'd been closest to since freshman year. But not everyone is ready to move on. Not everyone left Duquette 10 years ago, and not everyone can let Heather's murder go unsolved. Someone is determined to trap the real killer, to make the guilty pay. When the six friends are reunited, they will be forced to confront what happened that night and the year's worth of secrets each of them would do anything to keep hidden. This one just sounds so good. I think I first heard of this from Lisa's channel. I'll link her channel down below as well. But yeah, very excited about this one. Definitely a good 
murder mystery vibe. Next is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. I really hate this cover, but this is also like a fantasy series that's been around for a really long time. I think I heard about it on Ashley from a Frolic Through Fictions channel years ago and it's been on my list for years and I decided to finally pick it up and I'm very excited to read it. I think this cover is hideous but still very excited for the contents of this one. Devoted daughter, beloved sister, Sorsha is the light of the Seven Waters clan. Then suddenly her father and brothers are lost to her, bewitched by her new stepmother. To reclaim their lives, Sorsha leaves the only safe place she has ever known. When she is kidnapped by enemy forces and alone in a foreign land, it seems that there will be no way for Sorsha to break the spell. But true magic knows no boundaries and Sorsha must choose, fulfill a vow or gamble on a love that could heal her world or shatter it. I've heard really good things about this. It's like kind of a classic fantasy series and I really do want to read it. Next is another cover that I absolutely hate, especially because I know there are beautiful covers out there, but we've got the paperback edition of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This book is very beloved. This is the author of The Night Circus, a book that I did not like very much. Well, I gave it three stars. I didn't dislike it. I just thought it was very underwhelming and kind of boring. I do want to give this one a shot. Everyone seems to love it. Maybe I'll like it more than The Night Circus. I hope I will, but I definitely feel like I have to at least try to read this one. Far beneath the surface of the earth, upon the shores of the starless sea, there is a labyrinthine collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entryways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, but those who seek will find. Their doors have been waiting for them. Zachary Ezra Rollins is searching for his door, though he does not know it. When he discovers a mysterious book in the stacks of his campus library, he begins to read and is entranced. Suddenly, a turn of the page brings Zachary to a story from his own childhood. A bee, a key, and a sword emblazoned on the book lead Zachary to two people who will change the course of his life. Mirabelle, a fierce pink-haired painter, and Dorian, a handsome barefoot man with shifting alliances. Amid twisting tunnels filled with books, gilded ballrooms, and wine-dark shores, Zachary falls into an intoxicating world soaked with romance and mystery. But a battle is raging over the fate of this place, and though there are those who would willingly sacrifice everything to protect it, there are just as many intent on its destruction. As Zachary, Mirabelle, and Dorian venture deeper into the space and its histories and myths, searching for answers and one another, a timeless story unspools, casting a spell of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships that sail upon a starless see. Next is a book that was on my radar several years ago and then I forgot about it and then I was at Barnes and Noble and saw it and kind of impulse bought it but I'm very excited about it. It's got a very very interesting premise and that is Havenfall by Sarah Holland. Hidden deep in the mountains of Colorado lies the inn at Havenfall, a sanctuary that connects ancient worlds, each with its own magic. For generations, the inn has protected all who seek refuge within its walls, and any who disrupt the peace can never return. For Maddie Morrow, summers at the inn are more than a chance to experience this magic firsthand. Havenfall is an escape from reality where her mother sits on death row. It's where Maddie fell in love with handsome Fjordan soldier Brecken, and it's where one day she hopes to inherit the role of innkeeper from her beloved uncle. But this summer, the impossible happens. A dead body is found, shattering everything the inn stands for. With Brecken missing, her uncle gravely injured, and a dangerous creature on the loose, Maddie suddenly finds herself responsible for the safety of everyone in Havenfall. She'll do anything to uncover the truth, even if it means working together with an alluring new staffer, Taya, who seems to know more than she's letting on. As dark secrets are revealed about the inn itself, one thing becomes clear to Maddie. No one can be trusted and no one is safe. Last but not least, I got a box set <laughs> of the Murderbot series by Martha Wells. I have all four of them here. All Systems Red, Artificial Condition, Rogue Protocol, and Exit Strategy. I just sometimes crave like a really short book to kind of mix in 
Um, especially sometimes at the end of the month I have like a couple days where I want to read something and like finish something and I feel like these would be perfect. I've also just heard really good things about this series and I'm very excited to try it. Um, I'm going to read the synopsis for All Systems Red, which is the first one, and I think you'll get the gist, hopefully. In a corporate dominated spacefaring future, planetary missions must be approved and supplied by the company. Exploratory teams are accompanied by company supplied security robots for their own safety. But in a society where contracts are awarded to the lowest bidder, safety isn't a primary concern. On a distant planet, a team of scientists are conducting surface tests, shadowed by their company-supplied bot, a self-aware SEC unit that has hacked its own governor module and refers to itself, though never out loud, as Murderbot. Scornful of humans, all it really wants to do is be left alone long enough to figure out who it is. But when a neighboring mission goes dark, it's up to the scientists and their murder bot to get to the truth. All right, that is it for my book haul. I am actually planning on slowing down. I still have my book of the month books that I will continue to get because I love that. It's so exciting every month. And I also have pre-ordered some books, so I will still be getting things. Um, but I plan to like not just go to the bookstore and impulsively buy a bunch of books, which is what I did a lot over the course of the last month and a half. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. I always really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.